It's the final weekend of the Feed the Candidates. Only two more games to go and three players are in the lead. In this video, we're going to check out the game between Janne Pomnishi playing with the white pieces against the Karu Nakamura. This is a great matchup. Two of the more experienced players are playing against each other. They have a history. I think they had some small uh, fights in the past as well, but I think they also have tremendous respect for the, uh, both their um, uh, chess skills. So this is going to be very interesting and probably an important uh, game for the outcome of this uh, event. Before I'm going to show you this game, I would like to thank you all for the overwhelming support the first two weeks of this candidates event. I just opened a PayPal account. So if you feel like you would like to support the channel, please uh, make a small donation. I will really appreciate all the support. I also do um, thank people who have already made a small donation. Excellent choice. And uh, you can also, of course, subscribe to the channel. Now, enough uh, publicity for my own channel. Let's just what happened in this uh, game. Jan de Pomsi playing with the white pieces and he uh, goes here for the move uh, one e4. That is not a surprise at all. e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop to b5. And here Hikaru played the move a6. So we would expect to see a main line of the um, Rue Lopez, the Spanish opening. But after the bishop goes to a4, a small surprise as Apart from the main move, knight of six, there are a lot of other possibilities, but I don't think that Napo had really expected black to play the move bishop c5. Now, this move bishop c5 is a very active way of developing, but at this point, well, it's not the most common way of uh, playing. And one of the reasons is that very soon this bishop can also be hit by uh, moves like c3 and uh, d4, but it's actually quite a, a tricky line and not easy to refute at, uh, at all. And... Um, if it's possible to refute it, in fact. Uh, what I really like about Hikaru's uh, choice, not only in this game, but um, in the entire event, he really managed to surprise his opponents with many small systems. In round one, he uh, played a very tricky line against um, Fabiano Caruana. I think there were some other black games as well. Like these kind of systems, you would only like to play for one game and it's very difficult re to remember all the uh, ins and outs. Well, let's see how it works out in this game. White castled, knight ge7. That's the uh, main idea of this particular setup. The knight does further support the knight on c6. And after the move c3, the knight goes to g6. So it also does uh, overprotect the pawn on uh, e5. Now after d4, the bishop goes back to a7. You don't really want to take yourself yet on uh, on d4. You don't want to surrender the center. And the bishop is well placed, uh, far away, keeping an eye on the center and indirectly against the king as well. Bishop g5 played to hit the queen on d8. And therefore, black goes for the move f6. Attacking the bishop, bishop goes back to e3. And white is saying that, okay, um, I have managed to provoke this move f6, and especially these light squares are uh, quite vulnerable. If you can get a light squared bishop there, it will be very unpleasant for the black king. So therefore, black castles immediately. So the king can always hide in the corner. Knight bd2 played. Even now, Hikaru decides to uh, put the king there already. So it's uh, tucked into, uh, into the corner. Pretty safe uh, spot. And as you can see, the pawn on e5 is pretty well supported, which means that even though white is occupying the center, it will be difficult to, uh, to really expand in, um, in the, that part of the board. Rook e1 played, and pretty sure this was still part of Hikaru's uh, preparation. Uh, there are various ways of uh, playing, and I would say something like d6 is, uh, is a logical move to uh, play, just to uh, try to uh, get the uh, bishop into the game at, uh, at some point. But Hikaru goes for a different plan. He decided to take on uh, d4, releasing the tension and giving uh, white the possibility to take back with a pawn, which was not played. And I think the reason is that uh, black really wants to uh, strike back in the center with a move like uh, d5. And um, well, in, in, in some ways, you if you're able to establish a blockade on this d5 square, things are not looking too bad. In a way, um, also the bishop on e3, as well as the knight on f3, they are standing there, but not really able to exert pressure um, on uh, black's position. So that explains 
the move um, tried by Napo in this uh, game as he recaptured with a knight. But that also means there's not a nice pawn duo in the center. And, um, well, black may uh, think about different options, but uh, you also want to get your bishop into the game and moving the pawn is not an option yet because it will hang the, the knight on the c6. Black will lose a pawn. So therefore, black takes first. Knight d4, bishop takes d4. But here, since the knight is no longer there, I think d6 is absolutely an, a reasonable option. Maybe black's position is a bit cramped, but it is rock solid. Instead, Hikaru decided to take on d4, c takes d4. You can still consider playing in a soft way with something like d6, but his idea was now to um, play the move d5, putting pressure against the pawn and uh, black will probably create an, uh, an isolated queen spawn on the uh, d file. White captured on uh, d5, queen takes d5, hitting the pawn on uh, d4. So white moves the knight to a more active square. So the queen defends the pawn. But now you see that there are ideas for white to uh, put a knight on c3 or maybe the bishop on b3. So the queen itself, it's not a, not a great uh, blockader at, uh, at all. Therefore, the queen went back to uh, d8. This may look strange, but... In a way, it's also understandable because the queen will not come under a threat of, um, of a white uh, minor piece. But I think black may look okay here, but his position is quite, uh, quite uh, suspicious because you don't have a blockade on the d5 square. If you do give black a chance to play something like c6 and get a minor piece to d5, for instance, a, a bishop at some point, or maybe even knight e7, knight d5, Things are okay, but white can play the move d5 here, which was not played by Napo, but I think it's a very important move. Why is this so important? You're grabbing space. So, for instance, the queen can come to d4. You can connect your rooks, and even later on, you're having this idea, for instance, to play a move like uh, d6. And if you do exchange these pawns, and you're able to take back with a knight, then you're dominating the central files. It will be a symmetrical position, but white is way more active. I think that's a good idea. It was not played. Maybe um, Napo didn't like the move knight f4 to attack uh, the pawn on uh, d5. But here, something like bishop b3 would be an excellent way to uh, start because the bishop didn't have much to do any longer on this diagonal here on b3. It does support the pawn on uh, d5 indirectly, the, also targeting the, the king in the corner. And here, white still has simple plans even not only to expand in the center with d5, d6, but also to set up threats against the backward pawn on the c5. I think white definitely has a, has a clear advantage. Anyway, it was not played. Napo went here for the move bishop c2. So looks as if he is looking for attacking possibilities against the pawn on h7. And therefore Hikaru just played here the move f5 to hit the knight. The knight goes to c5. Looks like an active square. Black doesn't really want to, uh, to keep it there for long. You also want to get your bishop into the game. So he goes for the move b6. And here, another big moment in the game. Because white could, for instance, play something like uh, knight to e6. Was not played by Napo. You're forking the queen and rook. After bishop takes, rook takes. How to evaluate such a position? In general, to trade off many more pieces should favor the side playing against the isolated queen spawn. But I would also say that this bishop is somewhat better than the knight on uh, g6, while white is also controlling the e-file. You have ideas to target the weaknesses, maybe on the king side, maybe even on the queen side at some point. But it's complicated position. Anything can, uh, can still happen. But instead of uh, knight e6, Napo played here knight d3, which is remarkable move because it also does hang the pawn on uh, d4, which was not captured. What is the reason this pawn is not captured? I assume knight e5 is uh, the reason, with the idea to offer the exchange of queens. But after doing so, white first takes on g6 with check. If you take back, it's rook ad1. And just for one pawn, you do have quite a bit of uh, peace activity, while it's also hard to get this bishop into play. With correct play, it's probably it's still even type of position, but black got to play very precisely. So instead of taking the pawn, well, there are also other useful moves to make, especially Black still has to think about how to complete its development. So bishop to b7 was played. So the bishop is fantastically placed on this long diagonal. 
There are still ideas to take the pawn on uh, d4 and then the rooks are connected, so white will not be able to uh, to uh, to prove any uh, uh, sufficient compensation for the pawn. So white goes knight e5. And I think that if you do swap knights, probably white's going to take back with the pawn. And uh, white's just a bit better because now it, uh, it is a passed pawn, better than an isolated pawn. Uh, still not easy, but, uh, well, probably nice for, for white. Instead of taking on e5, black played queen g5, threatening checkmate in one, guys, hitting this uh, pawn on uh, g2. So the follow-up is the move d5. Closing the diagonal and as you can see I'm in another place I'm with some other chess friends here and we were analyzing the game a bit and we were thinking hey Hikaru can uh, can now play knight f4 we were analyzing it it was not played by Hikaru but I want to show you some incredible trap now after knight f4 threatening checkmate white probably goes g3 and uh, if you give a check on h3 king g2 knight f4 you may think this is going to be a repetition well, if you do play this move king f1, the knight on f4 is hanging. And uh, if you take on d5, white may follow up with bishop d3. And all of a sudden, you do have a lot of problems because the knight is in trouble. If the knight goes away, knight f7 becomes an idea with a knight fork, winning the queen. And the trick here is that if you do play rook a8, this is simply amazing. This could have happened in one of the crucial rounds of defeated candidates. In that case, there's a beautiful tactic. You may pause the video, hit the subscribe button, and then hopefully you spot that there are back rank issues because bishop takes d5 is a killer idea. Eliminating that knight after bishop takes, you sacrifice the queen on d5 so that after rook takes d5, it is knight f7 winning back the queen on g5, emerging with an extra piece. And of course, the knight cannot be taken because of rook e8 with back rank mate. Beautiful idea and um, was not played in the game. Knight f4 was not played, but it could be that Hikaru had all seen this. Instead, he played another very logical move, not playing aggressively, but simply improving his position by introducing the only piece which wasn't doing anything here yet. Rook a8 targeting the pawn on d5. White played instantly here the move, bishop b3, supporting that, um, that pawn. Here, a lot of possibilities how to how to play. Just don't play something like knight f4 because of queen f3. And white is about to go rook 81. And if you do take on d5, we have the same sort of tactics by taking with the bishop, taking with the queen. And at the end of the line, there's this knight f7, rook e8, back rank mate, what I just showed you. What should black do instead? I was thinking Hikaru wants to force the issue here with bishop takes d5. And after bishop takes... If you do take on e5, rook takes e5. There's this idea to play c6 and you are uh, winning back the, the piece on uh, d5. And probably with major pieces only, this should be very even. But instead, c5 was played. Of course, taking en passant is not an option because the, um, the pawn on um, d5 is pinned. And why is black playing this move c5? I was very surprised with this move. Why would you voluntarily give white a passed pawn on the d file? But if white is not able to come up with anything, well, there is this idea probably to go b5 and then play c4 to disconnect the bishop from the uh, pawn on d5. So um, then uh, the rook and the bishop are simply able to uh, to take it. So Napo also understood that he got to do something, but there isn't probably anything you can, uh, can do. Taking on g6, trading of the knights really doesn't bring white anything. So white played here. This move, uh, knight f3 back to, um, to attack the queen, which is a safe move. You're opening up the uh, file for the rook. But after queen h5, black still does have excellent chances. And if black were to play, probably knight f4 is, uh, is on the agenda with um, ideas against the pawn on g2 at some point. Maybe queen g4 can be played later with a mating threat. Also, the knight hits the pawn on d5. So here, the knight went back to e5. Well, if you do trade off queens and then take on e5, white is clearly better. This bishop on b3 is playing an important role in the support of the queening of the deep pawn. Not sure if that's really going to happen, but definitely uh, black has to be very careful and uh, cannot really um, prove anything here himself. So better don't go for the exchange of queens. Hikaru fought here for a bit, played the move queen g5, knight f3, and... The repetition really happened, guys. A draw was agreed. 
after knight f3 on move 27, which means that both players are moving up half a point in the rankings. But what's really gonna happen later, it all depends on the outcome of the game of the other leader, the co-leader Gukesh, who is playing against Ali Reza Firouz. I'm going to cover that in a separate video. Stay tuned. I'm on the road, so maybe there's a bit of a delay, but I promise the video will be up at some point. And of course, we will also see what is going to happen in this final round. Wu is going to win this FIDE Candidates tournament and become the new challenger of world champion Ding Li Ren. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. And we will soon see each other again. All the best. Bye-bye.